Yeah, thanks for the kind introduction. So I want to uh, speak briefly about um, a method that I have developed in the recent years. Um, personalized tasks for our students um, and corresponding sample solutions. And um, yeah, this I use in the field for teaching fundamentals of electric engineering. And as you already said, it involves LaTeX and um, some packages that also some people know, PGF plots for plots and diagrams and circuit ticks for circuit diagrams. Um, before I actually start, I want to do a short um, survey um, just to have some idea um, what, what are the people that are listening to the presentation now and I will put the link into the Zoom chat and I would ask you to click on this link and um, cast your vote. I will, I will also say I'm from uh, mathematics, uh, computer science and technology um, and let's have a look at the results. Okay, there are two more, uh, there's one, one more person um, from science and education and one more person from education and teaching. Um, and one more person that says, okay, <laughs> anything else, whatever this is. Okay, um, but there, there are now five, five people that said, okay, mathematics, computer science, technology, th this is a little bit what, what I expected. Um, this is good for me that then I can, I can a little bit go into more detail um, about the technical details also fr from the field that I'm talking about. So uh, some organizational matters um, slides are available. I can share a link to the slides after the presentation. There will be a recording, of course. And if you want to ask questions also in between, uh, no problem. Um, you can also, if you don't want to interrupt me, put questions in the chat. And um, then we will come back to these questions after the talk, or of course, you can also ask questions after the talk. So, a short overview over the talk. Of course, at the beginning, I will give a motivation why we have developed this method and what, what problem we're trying to solve with this. And then I go into the latest details and um, take a look at two of these developed tasks um, about two different topics, charging current and nodal analysis. And, um, yeah, how, how are these tasks then generated um, in LaTeX? And um, at the end, the discussion, uh, some evaluation of the results and what do the students think about it and, and uh, yeah, what has come out of it. So, why do we do all this? Um, at first, we want to, uh, let's say, stop our students from this bulimic learning, uh, learn everything that you need to know about the subject uh, three days before the exam and then um, puke everything on the paper and forget about it after one week. Um, but yeah, still at universities we'll have kind of these uh, traditional performance assessments. Um, students are forced uh, to solve tasks alone. They just have, uh, let's say, a paper and the plain calculator. Um, and uh, to be honest, this is not really how you would solve engineering tasks um, in real life. I mean, it would be would be kind of strange if Elon Musk says, um, "Here, you are you are my best engineer. Now, now just take this white paper, a pen, and a calculator. Go into this room for three hours and develop our new um, electrical car." Uh, so the, the real life the demands in the working world more look like this. That um, of course you, you have to know something, and of course you need to be able to solve tasks a little bit on your own, but. Um, you also need to cooperate with people and you need to discuss about engineering problems and um, um, you need to make people aware of problems that you are thinking uh, which are important and um, yeah, um, you also must be able to present a solution or to, to tell someone why you think your solution is right but, but the other solution is wrong. Yeah? So you need to have this um, discussion ability and this is nothing that we really um, assess in, yeah, in, in, in these traditional um, exams and performance assessments. So um, then a little bit how you can do this. I mean there, there are classical e-learning tasks uh, where you can test students' uh, competencies and knowledges but then the problem with these tasks is always um, 
it, they, they have to do a calculation, but at the end, they only fill in a number in the field. And you can only test the number at the end, uh, but you can not really check the calculation. So that's not good for us. Because in such um, a handwritten solution, um, students can really show if they have understood about all the details of, let's say, uh, an, a problem, an approach, how to solve this problem, how to set up a calculation, and then how to do um, the, the mathematical calculation. And in this handwritten solution, it's also very easy for students. Um, we, I mean, you had all these uh, accessibility talks yesterday, yeah, how, to, how to write down equations, how to draw diagrams. It's much, much easier to do this by pen and paper um, than um, yeah, if you, we are talking about first year and second year students. Um, if, you, if you tell them, now, now you also need to learn, they take how to write down an equation in an e-learning system, it will be too complicated for them. Yeah, so handwritten solutions are quite nice. Um, because you can also easily see student misconceptions and I've um, written down or I've copied some examples here. Here is um, a student calculated the Fourier coefficient. If you don't know what the Fourier coefficient is, uh, don't care, but um, it's something that sh should have the unit volt and then uh, because some some calculation with sine and cosine terms uh, with angles and radians um, and degree was involved, students converted these results from volt into volt degree, whatever this should be. Yeah, and this is some some misconception that you would never see if the answer to um, a question is just put a number in in the field. Yeah, because then the student would say, okay, volt is something that I should calculate, then I will. I, I could I could maybe take it, uh, convert it into volt degree, but I would not do it because it's not asked for. Yeah? So we have it's it's easily um, visible to capture these misconceptions. And here's another one. Um, if you know a little bit about electric engineering, uh, so this is a complex impedance with a real part and with some man man imaginary part. And here the student um, converted it into a time function, which uh, yeah absolutely does not make any sense um, for this impedance. If this would be a complex current and voltage phaser, then this would make sense, but, but not for this. Uh, and again, um, a very interesting misconception, um, but you will only see this in this handwritten solutions. So um, what, what we want to have with this personalizable tasks for handwritten solutions, uh, the solution should be handwritten because this is authentic. Um, you, you can see these misconceptions and um, students can easily write down formulas, schematics, diagrams and so on. If it's personalized, um, students cannot plagiarize from each other, but they can discuss. Uh, they, they can ask their, their fellow student um, in their learning group and say, look, I got this task, you got this task, H how, how can we solve this? They can, and they are invited um, to discuss about these problems and not only try to solve the problems themselves. Then, um, of course, if students have written down solutions, someone must check these solutions. Um, and uh, we as teachers don't have enough time to do this. So students should do peer review. Uh, this is also interesting for them because then they look at other students' solutions. They see, okay, they, 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 these other students, they got the same problems like me or they got different problems. And they have to think about other solutions for similar problems and think um, like mm, um, someone has tried to solve this similar problem differently than me. Is it still right? Is it still wrong? Um, so I think there, there are also um, there's a, is a big learning outcome from this peer review. Um, of course, it also lowers the correction effort for the teachers, but um, you need to have very good um, and, and also personalized um, sample solutions because students that were not really able to solve their own question and problem should still be able to do a proper review of other solutions. And then um, Moodle is a learning management system and email, you know, um, so everything should happen electronically um, with PDF files, for example, so that we don't have this red tape, uh, big piles of paper somewhere that you need to 
um, received from the students and sent to the students. So this is the idea. Um, then I have three diagrams, a little bit how it's technically implemented, and then we can come to the LaTeX um, details. And you see that LaTeX also uh, already appears here. So these are always the students here. The students register in this Moodle, in this e-learning system. I get a list from all the students. And I did all the programming in MATLAB. Why? Because I know MATLAB, I'm an engineer. Uh, you could choose any other programming language, Python, for example, but I did it in MATLAB. Um, and from this list of students, I get the names and I get the matriculation numbers and I, I use the matriculation numbers as um, um, start seed for random number generators. So every matriculation number generates a different task, but the same number generates the same task again. So I, if, if something goes wrong, um, so these, these tasks are randomized, but still a little bit fixed. Yeah, and so then LaTeX generates a PDF, um, the task and the sample solution. The sample solution will be stored into a folder and the task is sent via email to the student. And then the student has one week uh, to solve the task, has some idea or not, and submits the solution back to this Moodle, back to this e-learning system. I download all the student solutions as a zip file and put them back into MATLAB. Um, and then MATLAB takes um, the student solutions and the uh, corresponding sample solutions and sends them to other students. Yeah, so each student now gets two emails uh, saying, here's the solution of a different student, here's the corresponding sample solution, please re review it, please score it. Um, again, you have one week uh, to say if it's right or wrong, um, and then please submit it back into this e-learning system. Uh, and so then this is what the students do. They, they, they mark it, this is right, this is wrong. If it's wrong, they always need to say, okay, why, it's, why, why do they think it's wrong? Um, give some score and submit these uh, reviewed solutions back to the learning management system. And again, I download all um, stuff as a zip file and then the students at the really end get back their two reviews and their own sample solution so that they can uh, once again check if everything is right or wrong. Um, and then the, the points are that they got uh, are stored in a, in a score list. And to be honest, these points are quite important for the students as some um, extrinsic um, motivation and we, we the, the, the the points uh, are um, do not count for the exam but uh, so the, the, the students need to uh, collect enough points that they can register for the exam so that's the that's the idea um, so now how how is this implemented in LaTeX how are these tasks uh, generated in LaTeX so I will take a look into two um, sample tasks. I think at the time I have uh, 13 tasks um, developed in total. So the, um, this is the first task that, that I've created, that I've implemented. The, the task is more or less always the same for all students. So they get a displayed curve of a current and from the current um, as a function of time, they should calculate the charge uh, by integration over time over for um, time periods, some initial charge is given and then they should calculate the charge and, and again draw it as a curve display it as a time function. And so the task is the same for all, but each student gets a different diagram. So here for, for some sample matriculation numbers, um, I've given different diagrams and it's always a linear function here and then three constant functions in this other three time steps. So one diagram looks like this and the next one might look like this and the next one might look like this and like this and so on. Um, so they all get the same tasks, but uh, they all get different diagrams with different values. So they have to develop um, yeah, more or less an own solution. Um, so how is this done in, in LaTeX for these diagrams? Of course, I use this PGF plots package. And um, so th this task, to be honest, is fairly simple. 
Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a really good LaTeX programmer, uh, so I can only do simple stuff in LaTeX. This is what I could do. Um, so here is this the, the seed for this random number generator, and then I generate um, yeah, random integers for the currents at the different instance of time, and then there are some, some if then else functions. If the random number here uh, is zero, of course it should not be zero. If the current is zero, the task does not, does not make too much sense. So then I set it to one. And and if um, if let's say in two um, adjacent um, time slots, the current has the same value, then it's yeah. Then then I also need to catch this. I think here is something like this. If the current in two um, the previous and the next period is the same, then I just invert the sign um, so that they are different, for example. Uh, and then um, you plot the diagram out of this um, in the text picture in an access environment, give proper labels, and then just use these random numbers uh, that just have been generated and put them into the diagram. That's the idea of these uh, PGF plots diagrams. So everything there really happens in LaTeX, the random number generation and um, the creation of the tasks. And then as said, I also need the sample solutions. Um, so what the students should do is um, a section-wise calculation, read the time function um, for this section from the diagram, um, put it into this formula for the charge, um, integrate over this linear function here, for example, uh, simplify the formula and calculate the charge at the end of this um, first time section. And um, yeah, I said for every student here, in this case, it's really the same formula. It's, it's just different numbers, but uh, trust me, for a student that has just started studying electrical engineering and has just survived the first two or three weeks of his study, this is, this is hard enough. Um, yeah, so every matriculation number just, as you can see, just generates different numbers in, in this, um, at this time, very same formulas. And how do I do this? Um, yeah, just again, um, calculate these numbers here. I have something that, um, trims the zeros at the end so that I really just get these um, integer numbers um, and then just put them as um, PGF math macros in, in um, SI commands from the um, SI unit X package. And this, I think this package got a major update in the recent month. So uh, these commands here will change. Um, I'm, I'm still working with the old package, but yeah, this is more or less it. Yeah, put the numbers into these equations. Okay, um, and then at the end, students should uh, draw a diagram to check this a diagram of the of the charge as a function of the time. And here again, I just create them in in PGF plots. I have not given um, the um, LaTeX source here again, but you can see that these diagrams look quite um, different. Yeah? And that's the idea. So, and at the end, if the students properly do the calculation and properly do the drawing of the plot, it's, it's fairly easy at the end for other students to check, okay, these two diagrams, they really look the same or they do look different, these plots. And um, so just with these four different current numbers, you can generate very different um, graphical representations of the charge as a function of the time. Um, so this, I have prepared a second survey and the second survey, I will put again, the link in the chat. Um, the second survey is um, if you are also teaching and maybe also if you are just doing training somewhere, um, can you think of similar personalized or randomized uh, tasks that could be used for your subject. And um, of course, I would say <laughs> yes, immediately many. Uh, and take a look at the result. Okay, and interestingly, there are um, some people that say, okay, uh, yes, yes, some or but or uh, some, but after some thought, uh, I will once again 
update the results. Okay, no one said no and no how, no way. Okay, interesting. Thanks for your feedback. Um, yeah, so let's have a short look on um, a second task. And the second task is about uh, nodal analysis. This is something in electric engineering, a method to calculate all the voltages and from the voltages and later on also the currents in a given circuit. And uh, these no uh, voltages are called nodal voltages. Um, and um, already symbols are given here for them. So the, the task is uh, students should draw these nodal voltages in the circuit, in the given circuit diagram set up an equation system to calculate these voltages, um, solve the equation system um, after inserting the values of the components inside the system of equations. So again, the, the task is the same for all, but everyone gets a different um, circuit diagram. Again, they are generated with a um, random number generator from the matriculation number and all these um, circuit diagrams, they, were, they, they always have three nodes, a reference node and three nodes, and then different elements, um, current sources or resistors or current sources in parallel to a resistor or, or just a current source um, between these nodes. And so different matriculation numbers, as you can see, there are always these three nodes, but the circuit diagrams can look very, very um, different um, with, with these different options and possibilities that you have there. And um, so how do I do this? Now I do all the programming in MATLAB. This was too complicated for me, to be honest, to program it in LaTeX um, with all these. If there's a current source at this position, you need to have um, a resistor there because here, to be honest, you really need to be an expert in your field to generate um, circuit diagrams that where it's possible to calculate them, um, where the matrix does not get singular or where, uh, where you can really solve this equation system and where there's really just one uh, definite solution of this equation system. So I do everything in, in MATLAB and then just generate um, from MATLAB um, the, the latex source code um, using this circuit ticks package and then um, yeah, you, you, you just draw a path um, from a certain point in the coordinate system to a different point and then say, okay, there's a short connection or there's a, this uh, creates a current source, this creates a resistor, uh, this creates a current source again, and then you can just label them with say, okay, this is the resistor one, this is the resistor two, um, and so on. And, and also label the nodes, put, um, let's say these soldering dots at um, the nodes and then say this is node zero, the reference node, node one, node two, node three. Um, and then I can, I can from MATLAB, uh, not only generate the LaTeX code, but of course also run PDF LaTeX um, from a command line and generate the corresponding PDF files. Um, and then the sample solution, um, here I've, I've displayed the um, equation systems or systems of system of equations that the students should add, um, should set up um, to calculate the network, and there are uh, the conductances of the resistors, these nodal voltages, and um, the current sources that are connected to a certain node, and and. Um, yeah, and now you can see if I scroll through these different um, solutions that these systems of equations really look different. Um, of course, it's always a three by three matrix, uh, three unknowns, um, because the, the calculation effort should be the same um, for all students, but these equation systems uh, really look um, different now. Um, and again, I generate the corresponding LaTeX um, source code in MATLAB. Say, if there is a resistor um, connected to this node, then uh, we need to have an entry here and there um, inside the matrix. If a resistor is connected between two nodes, then we need to have some entry here and there. And if a source is connected to a certain node, uh, pointing towards the node or pointing away from the node, then we have a current um, source in, in this vector here with a plus and minus sign. 
Ah, and then, of course, for the for the MATLAB uh, code, it's no problem to insert all the values, um, and then, of course, also to to um, invert the matrix to calculate these three unknown nodal voltages. Um, and yeah, so then the equation system um, or the the latest source code of the equation system generated in MATLAB. Um, just looks like this. Uh, so you have a matrix, you have all the entries um, um, inside some equation. Um, just that no human being needs, uh, need, needs to write down everything. Um, the, the computer, um, the algorithm can automatically uh, generate hundreds and thousands of these uh, tasks and sample solutions. Okay, so um, what has come out of it? Um, what, 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 what are some results that are interesting to discuss? So um, it, we, we do these um, tasks, as you could see from the procedure in cycles. A cycle is always two weeks. The students get the task, have one week to solve it, um, submit their solutions, get sample solutions from the students, and have another week to do the peer review. And after two weeks, um, everything is done and then we have a 14 week semester so we can have um, yeah, up to six of these cycles during a semester and in, in, in a typical cycle uh, these tasks are sent to about uh, 200 students so this is about the number of students that we have in our lecture uh, about fundamentals of electric engineering and then yeah, no, not all, but uh, most of the students, so let's say around 150 students respond and submit a solution. And then um, they only get points for their own solution if they also uh, do the review and uh, submit um, these two reviews. Um, yeah, but some always forget, so, so you, you always lose five to 10 students, but let's say about 140 students uh, do the review and carry this out. And from my point of view, I don't know if you are, if you have experience with teaching at the university, <laughs> um, this is, this is quite good. These are quite good numbers. Um, uh, so we could say, okay, this is, this is kind of an excellent activation of the students during the semester um, to really solve some tasks and not say, oh, the, the exam is um, long, long, long in the future. Um, why should I do something now? I have so much time to do it. Um, so it's, it's a quite good long-term preparation for the exam without this teaching to the test that at the end you have the very same um, problems in the exam that you covered before in, in some exercises like this. Um, so then, um, because everything, of course, these score lists are stored electronically and students submit in this e-learning system, um, you can do some statistics. Um, so look at the typical distribution of the points, for example, and then most of the students um, really get um, full points or almost full points. Um, yeah, why? I mean, they have one week um, to, to solve these tasks. They can do lots of checks. They can also use, um, of course, um, a circuit simulator like SPICE to check are these voltage or are these nodal voltages that I've calculated by hand or maybe using MATLAB, um, do they fit to the real circuit? Of course, as I said, they can ask their fellow students, uh, I will check your solution if you check my solution and um, let's see how we can get the best score and so on and so on. And that's why, um, yeah, in most cases, they, they uh, have almost full points. And yeah, sometimes also just very few, um, but, but as I've talked to students, if they are not really sure about their solution um, or if they, if they are quite sure that it's wrong, then they do not submit um, because wh why should they then do the review and so on if they do not get any, get any points at all. Um, the next diagram that I would like to show is a typical distribution of the um, a deviation of the points between the two reviewers, reviewer one and two, and then you can see that because of this um, very detailed um, sample solutions, um, the reviewers in most cases also 
um, give more or less the same score with very few deviation. And then, of course, there are some, um, some cases where um, the, the solutions are very strange. Yeah, students have done it in a very different way that was given on a sample solution. And then the, the student reviewers who are not really experts in the field, of course, then they are unsure how to grade it. Should they, um, uh, should they count points or should they count failures? And um, yeah, sometimes it's also really difficult then to grade these kind of right, but still very wrong solutions. Um, and, and at the end, I just take the average. Yeah? So if there are two reviews and one said, okay, this is 12 points and the other ones it's said, okay, this is just six points and I, I take the average of nine. Um, and, and this works in most cases. Um, then it's also very interesting because you can check in this in e-learning system, in this Moodle, um, at what time of the day students submit. And uh, so now it's, um, 9.30, um, and as in this talk, attendance is rather light. Um, yeah, students, so the, the, the busiest times for our e-learning systems are in the evening, um, their most stuff happens, and then, um, but until late in the night, but, but let's say at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in the morning, you could shut down all servers, uh, no one would notice. Uh, because there really everyone is um, asleep. And then I've, I've, I've uh, collected some fun facts. Um, um, of course, it's a German university, so I have to translate it. The, the, the German people can laugh right now, but uh, for the other ones, I have to translate it into English. This is a screenshot from the submission page in our uh, learning management system. And this is the file name of the um, file that the student submitted. And this uh, uh, file name translates into full points, which I think is very interesting. If uh, as a student, you submit your solution uh, with the name full points, uh, or someone has submitted his solution uh, under the name own my, my own solution and then as a lecturer if you think okay if there's a file on the computer of the student that says my own solution is is there also a file that is named um, solution of my friend and um, this is also quite funny this is um, submit me pdf um, yeah, so and th 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 to be honest always interesting things happen um, if you really, this is also a method um, where you can really get the students working during the semester um, and not push everything until shortly before the lecture. So if, um, yeah, as said, there are 13 different uh, tasks that have been developed so far um, for all different um, topics within fundamentals of electric engineering. Um, and, and I have one simple task for mathematics. Um, yeah, where, where, where it makes sense um, to have this randomization, uh, so where uh, people get different diagrams or different circuits, um, or, or yeah, um, problems where, where, where you can do this, this randomization, and where it's still possible for a computer algorithm to um, to understand the problem and to generate such a sample solutions. Uh, and so I've done it four years now, this method, eight semesters uh, with uh, 36 runs. And um, as you can see, generated using LaTeX uh, lots of these personalized tasks and um, high number of students um, submitted solutions and, and a very high number of peer reviews um, that have been done. There are some links to further information. Um, there's a lightning talk, but everything here is in German. I, I um, frequently Twitter about this method under German hashtag personalisierte Aufgaben. There's an article in um, the German LaTeX um, journal Technische Komödie uh, from uh, German Dante e.V. Uh, from two years ago. And there's also an FAQ with lots of questions on SlideShare. And now I will also um, put 
the link to the slides into the Zoom chat. And so this finishes my talk and now I would be happy to answer some questions.